Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Attorney John Deaton shared a lot of comments from Ethereum co-founder Joseph Lubin. And I just think, I, I want to run through this because it perfectly illustrates like, the SEC's complete absurdity. And it's got to make you wonder, what the hell kind of special treatment exactly did Joseph Lubin have? Like, I mean, we've certainly got an idea. We know about the Ethereum... Uh, free pass speech that William Henman gave in the summer of 2018. But um, you'll see what I'm talking about as I get into the video. But I'm wondering, like, did he get like further special treatment beyond that? So there is at least one comment in particular that's sticking out to me right now that John Deaton highlighted that will uh, make you kind of go, hmm. It, 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 look, it's as far as I'm concerned, a matter of fact that the SEC wants your blood. Like, if you're an XRP holder, they, they, they basically just figuratively want your blood. Like they, and it's it's true enough, you know. Like they they're attacking the entire crypto space. They're just coming after Ripple uh, more on the front side of things right now. But they're not just going after Ripple. Yeah, I get it. Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, those are the named defendants in the lawsuit. Totally understand that. But then if you look at what they're actually arguing in their legal complaint, uh, they're saying that. People sharing or selling XRP on secondary markets are part of this common enterprise. Like, we're in a common enterprise. Yes, you're in a common enterprise with me, with Moon Lambo. You just didn't know it, but we are apparently, and with Ripple. Uh, it's just, it's one big old common enterprise, and we're all participating. And, uh, like, it's complete and utter nonsense. Of course, we all know this. And the more we uncover, like, the more infuriating it is. And so, I uh, hope your blood pressure's doing okay today. <laughs> because it might not be by the end of this video. Uh, but before going any further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Uh, and by the way, this is a quick update because I just found this to be awesome sauce here uh this is from john deaton's crypto law organization and um and i shared that uh, that they added to their website a, a, a form it's, it's basically a um it, it's an opportunity well you, you still have this opportunity either way but it's a form that is set uh, to just basically automatically send letters on your behalf like you write the letter still but it, it, it's done like just all the fields right there. You, you type stuff up, you hit submit. It's it's really easy peasy. You don't have to go looking for your your, uh, your congressman or representative's information. And you can just send the relevant people where you live in the United States uh, communication, basically. Uh, well, this tool has been adopted like pretty wildly to this point. Take, take a look at this update from Crypto Law. Update, since Connect to Congress, which is the name of it, went, since Connect to Congress went live on October 29th, over 6,000 messages have been sent across this online tool to 517 U.S. members of Congress. Whew, that's incredible. It hasn't even been live that long, though the word's just still getting out, frankly. Uh, so I just thought I'd mention that. So, like, people in our community, the XRP community, like, we are on it, right? Like, talk about an engaged community. Like, we get the broader implications of all this. It's really incredible stuff. I, like I've said many times before, the XRP community is the best community in all of crypto, uh, hands down. Um, so now into this. A thread of Joseph Lubin quotes, and this comes directly from attorney John Deaton. Oh, it's going to be a good time. Or we'll have a blasty blast. This one's from May 12th of 2018 which is uh, just about a month before the Ethereum free pass speech from uh, former SEC director William Hinman. And here, here's the quote from Joseph Lubin, co-founder of Ethereum. We never positioned Ether as a cryptocurrency. We called it a crypto fuel. Wouldn't be considered securities. We're making great strides in helping the people that make those decisions understand. That's the quote. And, and you'll see as we go through this. Like, the arguments that he has, some of these things, it's just like, how the hell could you be so dim as to think that by calling something something different than what it actually is, you'll get away with this? But then, now that we have the benefit of hindsight, you might think, oh yeah, that is a pretty dim argument, but it freaking worked. <laughs> it's, I know, I know, I know. But... Uh, like, you're going to just call it something different, and then the SEC won't view it for what it is? Like, I'm just saying... If I'm looking at a donkey and you tell me that, you know, like, it's it's a cat, like, I'm not going to buy that. Do you see what I'm saying here? 
And then there was this from May 17th, 2018. This is, again, this is all, all Joseph Lubin here. And we're very confident that we understand how to do that without regulatory bodies considering those kinds of token securities. It wasn't an ICO. We called it a token launch. <laughs> it was sold very explicitly to software developers. Think about this. So, yeah, let's just, just tweak this a little. No, no, no. It's, it's, not, a, it's not an ICO. It's, it's not an offering. It's a, it's a token launch. Much more sophisticated. Very different than an initial offering. It's a launch not an offering. See? See? Oh, okay. Gotcha there. And, and this idea of it being explicitly sold to software developers, what BS? Um, and so Vitalik Buterin, another co-founder of Ethereum, says that they sold it to everyone, and they sure as hell did. Take a look at this headline. Uh, this is from Decrypt, November 16th, 2020. Vitalik Buterin sold 500,000 Ethereum to Mike Novogratz for 99 cents each. Uh, I'm sorry. Was he was he a software developer? Is is, is uh, this because he was a Wall Street guy at the time? Uh, is, was he developing software for Ethereum, something or other? No, I wasn't doing that. Okay, I didn't think so. Yeah, so <laughs> it's just it's just the most ridiculous argument. And look, this is the purpose of this too, and I, it's worth mentioning this. It's not to tear Ethereum to shreds. Um, it's it's to to point out a number of things, including the hypocrisy from the SEC, which is very important. And as far as Joseph Lubin. He is a friend to the SEC because he got a free pass. Uh, he thinks that what has been done to uh, Ripple and XRP holders is just. He thinks the SEC is doing a good job. Uh, so he, he's part of the problem, folks. He is, you know. Um, if he just happened to have gotten a free pass and he, he just happens to be the beneficiary of that, but uh, he's, he's at least acknowledging that reality is reality, that would be a different story here. But Joseph Lubin is living in La La Land. Like, I just, I, I, I don't know how he could actually believe some of this nonsense that he's saying here, but he's, he's never been a fan of Ripple, never been a fan of XRP. Then there is this from May 24th, 2018. We're mostly focused on securities law. We're also able to issue consumer utility tokens that wouldn't be considered securities. We're focused helping regulators around the world understand that these, uh, that there are these network business models. Uh, here's another one, June 8th, 2018, which is six days before the Ether Free Pass speech. We certainly need bodies like the SEC to scare many projects straight. That's the quote. And so then John Deaton in parentheses wrote, Sounds like someone is very confident that Hinman will say, and putting aside the fundraising that accompanied the creation of Ether. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Which is what happened in that speech, you may recall. Why? Because the first time I ever read that, I was like, whoa, 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 why are we setting that aside? That sounds like kind of a big freaking deal. Uh, and an ICO, isn't that uh, kind of a problem? Because the SEC has stated that's usually a problem. Uh, but we're, we're setting that aside. And so how is it, knowing he, him knowing what, what, uh, what they actually did, and then days before the speech, how is it that Joseph Lubin... Is so confident. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Scare all the other projects straight. Yeah. We, oh, we didn't do anything. No, 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 no. Scare those projects straight, though. SEC. Does? Huh? How do you have that kind of confidence there? Did you perhaps know something? Well, let's keep going further because I think the answer may be yes. And here you go, June fourteenth, two thousand eighteen. And I love this one. Take a look at this. And you've got to wonder: Was he actually? given information prior to this speech. June because June 14th, 2018, uh, Joe Lubin speaks after William Hinman, former SEC director William Hinman, at Yahoo Finance Summit, right where the uh, right where the free Ethereum free pass speech was given. And here's what Joseph Lubin said said, which I find to be rather curious. I wasn't able to read through Bill's entire speech. I don't know if he spoke about XRP at all. And then parentheses John Deaton writes after he's told Hinman didn't mention XRP, Lubin gleefully says the following. Well, that's interesting. Question here. How, how is it? Because he, he said here, I wasn't able to read through Bill's entire speech. Who gave you a, uh, a copy of Bill's speech? How, how did you have it? it was, was it already published on the website before he gave it? I mean, if that were actually the case, that's fine. Just point that out to me. Uh, I'm not aware of that being the case. I'm not aware of speeches being listed on the SEC website uh, before the uh, the author of the speech gives the speech. So uh, how did you get that? You didn't get to read through the whole thing, and you don't know if XRP was included. 
are you sure you didn't know whether or not XRP was included? Because again, he gleefully stated uh, after being told that XRP was not included in the speech. Well, that's interesting. So clearly it seems like the tone would have been a bit of, oh gosh, I'm so surprised. Well, how did you know though? And so John Deaton writes in parentheses, it was scripted. Exactly. That's a question. I would love the answer to that. Uh, here's another quote from June 26, 2018. So we call them token launches. We were gratified by Director Hinman's words a few days ago. Chairman Clayton said something nice about Bitcoin, and then Director Hinman said something very nice about Ether, that it's not a security. Um, and here's another quote. The SEC is undervalued. They're doing an amazing job, and they really understand what's going on. Folks, this is the only human on the planet outside Joe Lubin. He's the only human on the entire freaking planet outside of the SEC that thinks the SEC is just doing a, a, a bang-up job, just a smashing job here. Oh, what, what a bunch of intelligent professionals that are clearly acting in the interest of investors and not themselves, right? That's what they're doing. He's the only freaking person on the planet that thinks that. Hell no, they're not. I say, hell no, they're not. They are not looking out for investors that are harming investors. And not that they don't ever do anything to protect investors in the case of scams and such, outright scams. Yeah, of course. And I applaud that, of course. But not what the, not the way that they're treating the crypto asset class as a whole, and certainly the way that they're harming XRP investors and going after Ripple. No, I do not have uh, the sense that, uh, the, that the SEC is undervalued and that they're doing an amazing job and that they understand what's going on here. No. Absolutely not. And so then, parentheses, John Deaton wrote, the rest of the industry, however, is publicly complaining about regulatory uncertainty and the SEC's lack of guidance, including SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce, a.k.a. Cryptoma. And so isn't it kind of curious? This one guy, he happens to be the only guy outside the SEC that's thrilled with what's going on, and he also happens to have gotten the golden ticket. Is that a surprise? Wow. Talk about just self inch. My gosh. Here's another quote from July 6, 2018. So we took a little pause. It was a seven-month pause. I drove lots of the legal work. We got a piece of paper in our pocket before we actually launched the token sale. And so, look, I've been, you've, you may have heard this, this quote before, too, about the piece of paper in the pocket. Uh, John Deaton has the same question as me. He wrote in parentheses, a piece of paper from where and from whom? Well, I've been wondering that too. You you got something, you got, what, what'd you get? Some sort of little safety paper indicating that you're fine uh, from who and uh, like the what is the reason for it? I don't know, but that means something. And it's cryptic, unfortunately, but curious. July 9th, 2018. Director Bill Henman of the SEC a few weeks ago said some very interesting things about consumer utility tokens. He said that if you construct a consumer utility token properly, and if you market it properly, then it would not be considered a security. Um, but I do think we have regulation. I think in the United States, we have the Howey test, and we have this new notion that it can be sufficiently decentralized so that it's maybe not a security or not a security anymore. And so, look, if you think that Ethereum is sufficiently decentralized now, and maybe it is, then it's not a security. I'm not sitting here arguing that Ethereum is a security. That's never the point of when I talk about these any topic along these lines on my, my YouTube channel. That's, that's not the point at all. But it, it, it perfectly highlights the, the way that there is not an, an equal distribution of justice here. The, the SEC is picking winners and losers, and they decided that we as XRP holders are losers. That's exactly what they've done right here. Um so yeah and, it, and it's, it's it's interesting too because a lot of what bill hinman said in a general sense if it were sec policy i would say yeah that that makes a lot of sense actually because you're, you're you're factoring in the decentralization back yep but they don't want it to be official policy right um i'd still have beef with the setting aside of the initial distribution of the ethereum talking like no 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 that matters you can't gloss over that well actually they're the sec apparently they can do whatever the hell they freaking want uh, but they shouldn't be able to in a world where uh, justice is served. No, that is not what would have happened here. Uh, and then there's this from August 19th, 2018. So now you're a couple months out from the Ethereum free pass speech. Joseph Lubin says the following. I think we've got a lot of pretty high quality regulatory clarity, in my opinion. The SEC has been very clear. And there's lots of projects that sold securities to Americans that have received communications or will receive communications. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, so 
Of course, they get the free pass here. Uh, Ripple got one. <laughs> That's what John Deaton writes here in parentheses. Yep, no, they sure as hell did. We're all we're well aware of that. Um, here's another quote. Uh, so I'm pretty comfortable in this country that the securities law issues are pretty close to resolved. And I think there are going to be some bad times for some projects going forward. Uh, Joseph Lumen, what a bunch of nonsense here. It's not even close to resolved. Not even close. You're the only person that thinks it's outside the SEC that it's it's resolved that it, you know or, or close to being resolved even. Uh, ask anyone working in crypto anywhere, and they'll say, "Yeah, we don't have clarity." It, 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 what just everybody on the planet is wrong, but you. You happen to be right. You're the one. All right, and you happen. You also just happen to have the free pass. Oh, okay, that's how that works. John Deaton in parentheses writes, "How does he know uh, projects did receive and will receive notices and have bad times ahead?" Isn't that, that's a good question there. He's, he's, he, he, he seems to know a lot of things that the average person just wouldn't know. And he got a free pass. Why is this? Something doesn't pass the smell test here. Now, September 17th, 2018. But there's also, I think, going to be even more of a reckoning coming where certain projects obviously sold securities and sold them contrary to securities law. Right, exactly. Well, they should have called uh, what they were doing a token launch instead of an ICO. And then it would have been fine because you called it something different, right? And then you just lie and say that you're only selling it to software developers uh, because it's software. And it's, it's not an initial coin offering, and even though you actually do sell it to just in investors like Mike Novogratz. You do that, and then you're just off the hook, though, right? Is that is that the, the, the BS argument that you're making? Oh, yeah, oh, it is? Okay, wow. Well, thanks for nothing. October 15th, 2018. Some people, including me, pointed out that it looks like we were going to raise tens of millions of dollars from Bitcoin, Novu Rich, and that we might want to talk to some lawyers that we should be concerned that we might be selling an unregistered security. We pretty much defined what Ethereum is and what Ether is. I realized that we had an opportunity to tell people what this is, and there was a good chance that they were just going to accept our understanding and that we could create reality that way. And then <laughs> create reality that way. I'll tell you what, they're, they're like really doing some serious verbal gymnastics here to, to get around breaking U.S. securities laws, aren't they? Wow. Uh, and, and so John Deaton writes in parentheses, it's over their head, question mark? Yeah. Uh, and then and then the <laughs> quote continues here. And it seems to have worked. We seem to have created a reality. <laughs> wow, the audacity. And then parentheses, John Deaton writes, the SEC isn't that dumb. Why would Hinman and Clayton be okay with this? Do they have any ties to Ether that could explain why they would blindly accept ETH investors, labels, and definitions, and give a free pass. Yeah, exactly. These are the big questions that we've been asking. There's something clearly going on here. And it, just from the optics of it, like you can kind of piece this together at this point, right? It, it comes down to personal and business interest with people at the SEC, doesn't it? Is it just a coincidence that, uh, for instance, uh, William Hinman's firm, his law firm, uh, su substantially benefited from the, the stance here? And so they just look past this? It looks that way. Call it what you want. I don't care if you use the word corruption or not. Like, I don't want to even get hung up on the term. Let's get hung up on the facts because that's what happened. You call it whatever you want to call it. That's what it was. Here's another quote. Um, this is January 19th, 2019. So we are big friends and fans of the or that organization, the SEC. I think they are really understanding the space well. They are applying this thing called securities law to business in America. And then parentheses, John Deaton writes, maybe so much of a friend and fan that Henman becomes a partner? Yeah, exactly. This is what I'm talking about. How could it not be the case that it, look, clearly this benefited William Henman? Clearly it did, right? So call it what you want to call it. It did, though. Here's another quote. Um, yeah, we believe they, the SEC, get it. They've introduced a new construct, decentralization, into their thinking. They consider the Bitcoin network and token and the Ethereum network and token to be decentralized, so no transactions are securities. Except for, I thought that the SEC didn't officially take that position. Hmm. Whatever's convenient in the moment, though. And then he shared this uh, clip from the digital asset investor where Nancy Wajta's um, speaking, and I've actually covered this before, but um, th this particular, I watched it before recording. Which one was this? It was a couple hours ago. Um, uh, which one? Oh, yeah, I, I remember. She was saying that she personally doesn't believe that, um, that Ethereum actually is decentralized. 
she actually does and she's like so there you go so uh, bill hinman he, he comes on out he throws this idea out he says uh here here you go uh, here's the standard it's it's ethereum all i gotta do is just one hair better than that effectively and there you go uh you're sufficiently decentralized and so that's why i said like we we could debate whether or not it's sufficiently decentralized um and this was back in 2018 by the way but uh, but but still um like th this is what bill hinman was arguing um and then there is this quote here's another quote they have not said the same thing about other tokens. The Ripple token, for instance. And I believe they've made all the statements about decentralization they're going to make. The Ripple token. He knows better than to call it the Ripple token. He's just trying to upset people. Um, yeah. So as far as them making all the statements about decentralization they're going to make, what official statements have there even been? Like, where is this clarity that you're insisting exists? Where, where, where is it? Uh, well, of course, the reality is you're just referencing what Bill Hinman said, and you're taking that as official SEC decree. Like, you're behaving like that, Joe Lubin, just like the rest of the market was, too. But you can't have it both ways. Is it clarity or is it not? Is it official, officially from the SEC or is it not? And so then, in parentheses, John Deaton wrote, he's an SEC spokesman? Why focus on Ripple and XRP? Is he involved with a similar business model? Good question. September 15th, 2019. Ethereum 1, you could think of as a prototype. It was an impossible project that got built, and we needed to put something that we knew wouldn't be scalable. We needed to do that to figure out how to build decentralized applications and the infrastructure. Let's just pause to think about this. They built something, Ethereum, which they knew wouldn't scale, but that's a final product because that's supposed to be important too. You know, it, it, is, is the product finished? Like, think about this. The XRP ledger was fully built um, a long, long time ago. Like, funds were not raised to build out XRP in the XRP ledger. Uh, so, so here's this thing that would never be anything more than a functional prototype, according to Joe Lubin here. Well, isn't that something? Because, again, the quote here, we knew it wasn't going to be scalable for sure. <laughs> okay. August 26, 2020. So Consensus and JP Morgan have been very friendly and collaborative for quite some time. We started to interact with them in a really concerted way around the time of the advent of the EEA, which is Inter Ethereum Enterprise Alliance. And so here you have, obviously, JP Morgan coin versus XRP. And we also know, and I don't pretend to know the guts of this, but somehow Ethereum is, is uh, competing in the realm of remittances, which is where Ripple's competing and positioning XRP as a bridge currency. So how about that? Picking winners and losers much? Hmm. August 28th, 2020. Four months before the lawsuit and after Clayton's law firm helps consensus by quorum. Here's a quote. So the publicly announced applications are their interbank information network. It is essentially a messaging layer similar to what Swift does. Consensus is supporting JPM coin. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up, folks. Look at how, do you see how the interests are aligning? Direct competitor to Ripple and XRP. And then Ripple is the one that the next that gets, it gets illegally attacked by the SEC. How many coincidences before we're just like, what in the ever-loving hell? Like, what fresh hell is this? Like, it, this does not make sense. October 6, 2020. Ethereum's early advantage is apparent in so many ways. One is a regulatory advantage in that Ethereum and Bitcoin arrived on the scene before regulators were watching. How about that? That's kind of interesting. Now, um, John Deaton points out, XRP and Ripple were created two years before Ethereum. In fact, Vitalik Buterin interned at Ripple, as John Deaton here points out. And that is true. In fact, he uh, was asleep on the couch of uh, Stefan Thomas for a couple weeks. Stefan Thomas, uh, former CTO of Ripple, says in the earliest of days. Uh, and, and really, uh, Vitalik Buterin, like where he got the idea for Ethereum was from his time spent interning at Ripple. Like That's where it came from. Um, he's not the one that came up with the idea. He's the one that created it and executed it. So credit where it's due, that's fine. But it, it's just, it's amazing like how the degree to which, you know, the crypto asset class globally has been so um, heavily impacted just as a result of the existence of Ripple and that that core group of people like, from the earliest of days. It's astonishing, really. It really is. Like, I, I've, I've, I've always just found that to be absolutely amazing. There are going to be so many movies about this stuff in the future. You just wait. Uh, yeah, this is absolutely going to be covered. Uh, here's another quote. 
So we were fortunate enough to be able to frame our token as a utility token. And then parentheses John Deaton writes, everyone knows Ethereum was the first ICO and Ethereum architect Steve Naryoff, uh, who came up with Ethereum as crypto fuel, has admitted on camera that they violated securities law. And then he's got a clip of that. Uh, and and so then there's this, and it's just by the way just before moving on from that, it's it's basically more of the same crap of we're just gonna call something different than what it actually is so that way that's what reality is now that's pretty much it like, and Joe Lubin was even talking about how they basically molded and sculpted what they believe re reality is and uh, they they've gotten away with it to this point uh, June twenty seventh two thousand seventeen this is the last one we thought it was possible we would land at JFK on a certain day. And the FBI would tackle us to the tarmac. <laughs> and then John Deaton writes, Ether's successful fundraising started the ICO craze. A fact, not an opinion. I don't think today's ETH is a security, but I know today's XRP is not. Golf clap for attorney John Deaton, everybody. And so, by the way, so like, that is kind of like a funny comment about the FBI just like tackling you on the tarmac. I, I get it. It's like they're, they're half serious, though. I've heard stuff like that from Ripple employees, too, so I can I can understand that. But it's just funny, like from that comment to a year later, uh, it, like, just less than a year later from that the, the day of that comment, uh, Ethereum free pass, you're all good. It, it's, it's just fascinating. Life's weird, folks, so we're just going to keep talking about it. Uh XRP holders are not willing to take this laying down. Uh, and I know that we're on the right side of history here and everybody's working as a community to get the truth out. And I, I sure as hell I'm going to keep doing it. And I appreciate everybody sharing uh, my, my videos on these topics and everything that everybody's doing on social media the world over within our community. It really is impressive how everybody's come together and contacting uh, relevant uh, political representatives, let's say. But I'll go ahead and wrap up here. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.